We actually have it. NVIDIA's upcoming desktop CPU for consumers just got its first benchmark. But before I get to that, NVIDIA's next GPU has been confirmed and a new solution for EVGA woes. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, NVIDIA's RTX 5050 has now been confirmed, as it was listed on multiple retailers, though with some conflicting results. Now, I will say that while these are notebook GPUs, the league specs for the desktop part seem to be very similar. Starting things off, we have a German IT company who actually shared pretty much the entire specs. As you can see, yes, this is an RTX 5050 GPU, and according to this, it comes with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6, which seems to confirm the recent story that I went over. Remember that first it was supposed to be GDDR6, then there were some leaks that claimed that, oh, it's GDDR7, but then it was back. No, actually, NVIDIA decided GDDR6. But remember that I actually said that there are some conflicting issues here, but I'll get to that in just a second. First, Let's go over the clocks. This one here has a base clock of 2235 megahertz and a boost clock of 2520 megahertz. Then for the cores, it comes with 2560 CUDA cores. And when we compare this to last gen's 4050, yes, this is laptop. As you'll notice, the CUDA cores are identical and the sad part is that at least according to leaks so far the desktop variant is said to have this exact same core count so yeah definitely not very impressive here luckily it does have slightly higher boost clocks and Obviously, you can see it goes from six gigabytes to eight. But when speaking of memory, like I said, some kind of weird conflicting stuff here, as you can see right here, according to this new egg listing, it comes with GDDR7. So I don't know. I definitely hope that we aren't talking NVIDIA's flat made it to the point where instead of, you know, different memory specs under one GPU name, they're now adding two completely different types of memory. Let's hope they haven't gone that far, but maybe just maybe because of all the conflicting information that could actually be the case. But first, while more and more of you are subscribing, there's still a whopping 66.7% of you who watch regularly yet aren't subscribed. But why? We know you like PC hardware, so just go ahead and subscribe. It's free and takes two seconds. Plus, hit that bell icon so you can be notified on the latest news right when the video is released. And next up for today, it's been nearly three years since EVGA announced that they would be exiting the GPU business. It was definitely a sad day as EVGA was beloved by many PC enthusiasts. Since then, the company seems to be slowly winding down in their business as a whole. They haven't released a new motherboard since that same year, with their most recent products being PSUs that were released early last year. They also shut down their forums, and even now, their product pages are down for maintenance. Basically, they've become a shell of their former selves, and unfortunately, that's coming with a new issue. Specifically, motherboard owners are having major boot issues with NVIDIA's new 50 series GPUs. And this is not the same boot up problems NVIDIA released updates for. According to this, as you can see, the problem lies with the extra SM bus pins on several EVGA motherboards. What's wild is that it's such a major issue that users are resorting to putting captain tape over the pins. It says without official support, so I'm not at all advising you to do this or anything like that, users have resorted to an an ingenious fix. Physically taping over the pins on the GPU's PCI Express connector to silence any unwanted communication. And thus far, this solution has proven successful for several individuals. Ultimately, this is the downside of a company seemingly dropping out of the market. Hopefully this isn't really the end of EVGA, but it honestly does seem to be the case. And lastly for today, NVIDIA's first gaming desktop CPU just got its first benchmark. That's right. Remember that earlier this year, we found out NVIDIA was planning to release a CPU set to challenge AMD and Intel in the consumer market. Initially, it was thought to be a mobile processor only, but a leak later claimed that they were actually planning two different series of CPUs, one for notebooks, but also one series for desktop. And according to the rumor, these were built from the GB10 super chip that makes up NVIDIA's upcoming DG3 
RTX Spark. That of course is a desktop AI PC, but don't forget that these are targeting consumers. Now, these CPUs were originally rumored to be announced at Computex, but it has apparently been delayed. Regardless, we now have our first benchmark on one of these upcoming chips. And as you can see, it is a Geekbench benchmark, and it's of the NVIDIA N1X which if we go back, you can see that the N1X is made for desktop while the N1 is made for laptops. And originally it was rumored to come with up to 12 cores, but as you can see here, it actually has 20 threads. And yeah, it says threads, but with these type of cores, it shouldn't have multi-threading or anything like that. Meaning that this bad boy could use the full GB10 super chip. Not only that, but while it says that it comes with a base frequency of 2.81 gigahertz, as you can see right down here, when you actually look at the detailed results, it actually boosts up to 4.051 gigahertz. Either way, when it comes to the score, you can see that in single threaded score, it got 3,096 and it's multi-threaded score, it got 18,837. And that is basically just below the single-threaded score of the 9800X3D, and just slightly faster than it in multi-threaded. And while that may seem a little bit disappointing, especially given the fact that we're talking a 20-core CPU, keep in mind that this is likely an early sample, and this is pretty much NVIDIA's kind of first real go at this. Yes, they have released CPUs in the past. Yes, Nintendo Switch, we know all of that, but I mean, this is a real go at a high-end consumer CPU. Plus, you know, this is on Linux. I mean, there this really doesn't tell us too much in terms of final performance, but it definitely looks like NVIDIA is going head first and going all in, and are actually hoping to challenge some of the best CPUs out there. And not only that, but don't forget that this is ultimately an APU. And yes, it likely does come with some AI like an NPU, something like that. But once again, this is for consumers. So yeah, I'm sure they'll tout some AI performance with it, just like AMD does with their APUs. But also just like AMD's APUs, this should also come with an integrated GPU. And given the fact that this is NVIDIA that we're talking about here, I mean, they may actually release something that could kind of make lower end, maybe even mid range discrete GPUs pointless. They are clearly going all in on this. Obviously this is very early on. We don't know too much information about it. I mean, kind of we do. I mean, obviously we're starting to see benchmarks here. Hopefully it's set to release before long, but let's just say that this is definitely starting to look very interesting.